Kittle has finally added vector editing to their tool, which is super exciting news. So in this video, I'm going to show you different ways to use these new features, including how to create simple shapes from scratch, how to trace a sketch, as well as editing existing graphics and even text. So I've opened up a brand new document in Kittle and in this toolbar at the bottom, we now have the pen tool. You can also press P on your keyboard to open it up. And the way it works is you simply click somewhere on the screen and then it will drag out this line right here to show you which direction you're going in. And then if you click again, it will make another point and create a, a shape. Well, in this case, it's just a line, but you can do things like click, hold down your mouse and then drag to make this line custom and to change the angle of it to have a rounded line a rounded shape and you can click and make multiple points like this to create a completely custom shape you can even close it off like this at the end and then if I go back to the move tool right here to select that shape you can then do things like increase the border weight you can change the color of it right here such as I could make it red you can also get rid of the border then you can even double click into this shape and still make edits to the actual points right here if you're not happy with the outcome and you can even double click on any of the corners right here and turn it into a sharp corner and vice versa if you double click onto a sharp one it will turn it into a soft corner additionally if you double click on here you get these anchor points so you can further change the curve or the way this path goes and another quick tip is if i draw out a new line right here if you hold down shift whilst you're kind of looking for your next point, it is going to snap to 45 degree angles like this. So if you want to be more symmetrical, more geometric with your angles right here, you can hold that in place to have very exact, whoops, <laughs> very exact angles. You notice I just made a mistake there. If you do something that you didn't want to do, want to go a step back to your previous point, you can hold control Z and it will go back to the previous point. So a lot of really, really cool, very intuitive features, especially to anyone who's used a pen tool before. And this will now help you make little custom shapes more easily. Like for example, if I wanted to draw a hat, let me try and do that. It's not the easiest, but I'll do something like this right here. Also notice how it kind of creates guidelines very nicely. If you are kind of close to another point or in line with another point, I really like that. And so we could do it like this and then come up here and kind of start creating a, a heart shape like that. Hopefully it turns out half decent. Uh, no, it's, it's not the greatest, but um, the good thing is you can double click into it and always still make adjustments. There we go think whoops let's go back that was better i think that's okay it's definitely not the greatest heart shape i've ever seen but the good thing is it's vector so you can really easily adjust the shape and keep editing it and at first you know all these anchor points they all seem a bit confusing what i'm often doing is if i'm editing them holding down shift that way it stays in line and I can more precisely adjust the curve of something. If you don't hold down shift, it kind of you know moves everything around a lot more. And yeah, there we have it. Now we could make this red right here. And let me show you a, another thing that you might want to know, because there's some additional features that you can kind of combine now with this pen tool, such as if we want to give this some eyes, we've got these shapes down here. So we can draw out some round eye shapes, but maybe I want to have a bit more of a custom eye. So I'm going to uh, duplicate these right here. And then let's make them the same color red. Yeah, we could do something like this, for example, and then we can actually subtract this shape that we've created down here, because there is a different shape. We can subtract it from the above points. Um, we actually need to do it one at a time. You've got the shape builder right here as well. This has been in Kittle for a while, but I wanted to just show it for anyone who doesn't know it yet. So if I hit subtract, there we go. Now we have a completely new shape for this eye, kind of like a half moon and Another thing, let's say you wanted to add a, a mouth to this as well, but you didn't want this to be an actual like black shape. You want it to be cut out from the heart. In that case, what you can do is you can just select everything and again, hit subtract. And now anything that is behind this heart, if I pull this to the, um, to the back right here, anything that's behind will shine through the mouth and the eyes like this. And so yeah, just a quick few tips right here um, of how to basically use the pen tool and some of the shape builder features that Kittle also has on the right. You can also intersect, um, exclude intersection or combine shapes like this right here. Now it looks more like a frog, but yeah, let me show you how to utilize this more, especially the pen tool to trace a sketch that you might have come up with. 
Right, so here we have a little bit of a sketch of a plant pot and I've imported that into Kittle. If you want to trace this and turn it into vector paths, one thing you can do or should do is lock this entire image. So we right click on this and then select lock. Um, you might be able to do that from the top as well. Yeah, you can click on more options there and then lock the image. And now we can more easily use the pen tool on top of this. So how would I begin? Let's start maybe at the top with the actual plant right here and just select the pen tool and start drawing out some of these stems right here. So in this case, I'm, I'm clicking on the bottom point first and then I'm going to the last point of that stem and then I'm clicking and dragging to try and match the shape of the stem. Now, as you can see, this is black by default, the color, which is not very useful because the sketch is also black. So in that case, I would go to the border and change that to a very vibrant color, like maybe red, and also increase the border weight. Now we can way more easily see once we have the exact same shape that we want to create as the sketch. Now that this is done, you can click out of it by going back to the move tool and you can still make some small adjustments to this if you need to and then go back to the pen tool and then I'll start doing the next step right here. Now knowing where to click is kind of something that you get used to with time. You'll notice you know if, if you click too often the shape will be a little bit wonky so I try and have minimal points that I'm clicking on. Usually I would be doing something like this. Yeah there we go and then now if you see this creates kind of like a weird shape. In that case I would click back on this point at the end and then it should be a sharp point yeah there we go that looks a lot better and then we can go back to the beginning right here i think that's pretty good so let's start with the next one and there we go now this definitely takes some practice but with time you can get a lot better i'm trying to get out of this right now because i want to start a new shape so in that case um, you can click on the move tool and then we'll go back to pen the shortcut for move tool is v so that might be worth remembering so let's try that with this right here if i draw out this shape yeah and if i want to go back to the move tool clicking v instantly swaps back so you can go between v and p right here very easily so i think you get the gist and um, there is definitely some other kind of tricks you can use like you, i probably wouldn't trace with the pen tool around this shape because it's more circular in that case you can use the ellipse and probably get a pretty decent result like this there we go and you can still turn that into a red border or stroke right here like we have it above and delete the color so there we go and this way we can kind of build out this image i'll probably speed up the rest of this because there's no point of me explaining every single time i click but you can watch the time lapse and kind of get an idea for what this process looks like another quick tip before we start the time lapse if you're too far zoomed in then hold down space on your keyboard to move around whilst you're creating a your shape like now i was actually too far away from the top of this stem and i'm just holding down space clicking and dragging and the pen tool is still open so i can still click at the very end right here but yeah that's the last tip for now and let's carry on with the time lapse right and there we have it let's select all of these shapes and paths right here and hit duplicate and then i will drag this down uh, underneath our sketch right here and then we have the plane image actually I want to expand this ad board a little bit right there we go and now i can also give this a different color let's take a nice little green and there we have the sketch turn into if you delete this right here sketch turned into vector shapes vector paths and one more tip i noticed whilst doing this is let's say you've created a shape but accidentally made one point too many well in that case you can just click on the point and hit delete and it will just take it out without breaking or destroying the entire shape and that's also very handy if you've misclicked during your process and you kind of notice it at the end so here we go you can also now of course go into these shapes and give them a color if they are closed off shape that should work fairly easily if not like some of these are open in that case giving it color wouldn't fill it out necessarily properly but you can still move these to the back for example let's right click on this move it to the back and yeah there we go it should be overlapped by this shape above so there we have it that is tracing a sketch with the new pen tool inside of kittle so another way to utilize these new vector features is for editing existing 
graphics that are already within Kittle. They need to be in a vector format. So if they're an image that's created with AI, it won't work with that. You need to vectorize them. And so far, I've also found it only works with vectors that have one color or a gradient uh, color scheme like this. The way to edit them or make changes to them is you double click into them, then you get all of the different paths right here and nodes. And then if you want to select or highlight any of these and make changes, you can just draw a box around it. And then there we go. We can move this entire shape around and not affect anything else within the graphic, which is really cool. So there we go. That's been moved over or you can extend things. Let's say you want to uh, bring down this shape right here. So double click into it just select the bottom points and then you can drag them around whilst holding down shift ideally so it stays in line and then whoops that was messed up let me try that again and then we can drag it down like this and if I double click out of that then now we have this extended shape and maybe you could connect it with a font right here at the bottom and you can also come into these if you're not happy with any of these shapes you can make adjustments give things sharp edges like whatever the goal is with the graphic that you have in front of you you can now very easily make edits to it and you might be wondering does this also work with text well let's go ahead and actually create a separate text layer down here so click on text on the side add headline and make this a little bigger and I'll type out vectors right here I'm using the typeface Sun ship and now the thing is there's no option to right click here and outline this font or turn it into a vector straight away it's also not the vectorizer on the right hand side so what do you do if you want to make edits to this or customize the text one quick way to do it is just quick export right here change the format to SVG then export and then you can just import that file that you just exported again and there you have it now we have it in vector format I know that's kind of you know a little bit annoying to have to export it and import it again but it only takes a few seconds and I'm sure they'll probably add the feature of outlining text as well in future so now you can click once again into this text and you can make changes to it for example if I wanted to extend this up here double click highlight this and then we can extend it and make some changes to it so it actually looks a bit better there we go and now you've customized that piece of text right there maybe you want to extend the t right here on both sides whatever it may be and this will be really handy as well if you have a font that looks extremely good for most of your design but then you have like one word where the starting letter looks kind of strange or one of the T's is like really messy and it's hard to read. In that case, you can just, you know, quickly outline this, turn it into a vector and then make edits to fix that tiny word or that tiny letter that looks a bit weird and stick with the same font with no issues. So definitely really handy to have this built in as well and it'll make customizing text way, way easier. Another big improvement to Kittle, which is not really related to vectors, but I still wanted to give you this as a bonus tip whilst I'm recording a Kittle video, is that now if you have a text layer right here and you want to change the typeface or the font, then you can actually bookmark your favorite fonts within Kittle. Previously, it was always tough to find the same font because the names are sometimes very confusing, but now you just click through your bookmarks very, very easily right here, as you can see, and then quickly apply a style. And the way to do that is, let's say you found a font that you like, like Adventure 06 right here, you hit the bookmark symbol and then it'll be saved and always show up across the top. And you can also collapse this menu, by the way, and then see the uh, recently used fonts category right here. Um, you can also collapse that one though, and then only see all fonts underneath. You can also search for a specific font style, which might have already been there before, but I never realized. But for example, you can type in texture, hit enter, and then you will see fonts with a texture effect. And this is actually really handy because that's how I found this one right here, Echo Motors, which at first glance doesn't have a texture, but then if you change it from regular to stamp, then it has this really, really cool texture effect. It has a bit of a rough edge and yeah, it looks really nice for t-shirt designs. And yeah, on top of that, you also have uh, filters across the top, which you can only see a few, but if you actually move your cursor around, so you get this hand symbol and then click and drag, you can also go across and select script. For example, if you're looking for a more feminine font or vintage is at the end right here. So that way it will filter out vintage looking fonts. So some really cool improvements to the entire typeface box right here. And yeah, I can't wait to go through and bookmark more fonts for t-shirt design. Let me know in the comments down below what you think about these new Kittle updates. And if you want to add some more fonts to your bookmarks, which work very well for t-shirt design, then click on this video next.